All right, today we're going to show you and explain the basics and the, the items that you need to do an electric fence. Good day. We're going to discuss uh, electric fencing. This is all to do with uh, normal domestic uh, applications um, known as wall top fencing. Uh, the first pole that we're discussing is round bar. As you can see, it's just a piece of round bar, 10 millimeter round bar. And what it has is comes in uh, bobbins with five, six, and eight. Um, so that's how many strands you can put on to the bobbin. The, the problem you have with this is one thing only that you use it, I can only use it on straight walling do not use it on stepped walling the reason being is if you put too much pressure onto the bobbin as, as it gets hot and cold the bobbins tend to slide down therefore you're going to have a fence which is going to be, have a lot of slack on it um, other than that if you do a straight line um, you'll be fine with this bobbin Okay, the next pole that we can discuss is a flat bar. Um, this usually comes in six and eight. We don't uh, recommend using it any longer than that. Um, unfortunately, when you mount this, you've got to remember it is quite flexible. So it's a type of pole I wouldn't really suggest around the front perimeter of your property. I would rather say if you've got a fence between yourself and the neighbor, or your budget doesn't allow you to, to use the uh, square tubing poles then you can use the flat bar but it, it is reasonably easy uh, to bend. Using the flat bar it has its disadvantage and its advantages. The disadvantage obviously is quite a thin uh, piece of flat bar which can bend but the advantage of being able to bend sometimes you've got to do weird and wonderful things to be able to make the pole uh, work on the side of a wall or between yourself and the neighbor's fence um, so it does have its advantages allowing you to bend and twist it and um, uh, that, that, is, that can help you okay the other part about it is the way the bobbin sits the wire will sit coming through here um, so when you have it on a stepped wall you'll be fine because the pressure is going to make the bobbin, uh, the, the wire stay in the bobbin versus a uh, dear round bar which sits this way the wire forces down onto it so that you're inclined to find the bobbins will unclip if you try doing a step wall um, so this bobbin as I said comes in a 5, a 6 and an 8 I uh, wouldn't suggest uh, anything longer than that because it becomes way too flexible and easy for someone to bend and get over your fence Okay, the next pole we're going to discuss is square tubing. You can see it's a much sturdy, stronger pole. You can see the way it has screws in to hold the bobbins. Um, not easily bent, provided you obviously secure it correctly to the wall. Um, you get it in a 5, a 6, an 8, a 10 uh, strand. So it's, it's the better of all the poles to actually use uh, when doing your electric fencing. Um, as you can see the type of bobbin I've got on this fence is a better type bobbin for um, protecting you and stopping people from lifting the actual um, wires or unclipping them. Um, as you can see if you have a look at it these bobbins will keep the wire in so the wire can't come out of it. Um, that's the advantage of a square tubing with this type of bobbin um, connected. Okay, when you obviously install the electric fence poles on the corners you need to support these poles especially obviously that's the end where you're going to be doing your tensioning. So if you don't support the pole with something it's just going to keep bending and bending and never able to tension the fence so the device that's used is what we call a stay as you can see some of the stays they have a pre-made um, lug on the end some of them will be welded and sometimes you'll find that not even done like that you, they'll just be 
a standard piece of round bar like I'm going to show you now. So it could be a round bar like that with just two ends, um, flat, uh, obviously just cut off straight. So in that case you'd have to use two lugs. Okay, as we discussed early on, you can have a stay that's just a, a, a piece of rod. Then you need to use lugs like I'm showing you now. And this lug would obviously fit inside here. And you would have the same effect as we had previously on the welded one. So that's the other alternative to the lug. Okay, the next part is you need to be able to clamp something onto this round bar to be able to support it with the stay. So what we have is a rubber clamp which you would slide around the pole like I'm showing you now and you would then squeeze it to make sure it's going to be tight on the pole. So now what would happen is as I said we have this clamp that you can either use this side to secure onto, onto the, um, the stay or you would use the other method which would be the, the, the clamp on its own. So the decision is yours which way you want to go. But obviously if you're using this method, simple, you would put the clamp onto it it comes with a screw and a nut which one has to put through as you can see I'm showing you now and then you would tighten it on the back end and that would make up the support for your round bar so when you tension it it won't bend and fall over okay so again another stay for the uh, flat bar, same story again as previously, if you don't put a stay on the end, the thing's going to bend and twist and you'll never be able to tension the fence correctly. So there's two ways of doing this. As you can see on this bobbin, it has a little screw inside. You'd remove that screw, you put a longer screw inside there. Then what will happen is you'll take the lug and the lug would actually be secured on, obviously with a nut over the top. And that's how you'll be able to support the flat bar using a stay. The other method you can do is you can drill a hole and put a, a nut and a bolt through uh, to support it that way. Okay, another pole, stay scenario again. When you're using a square tubing pole, um, obviously there's going to be a lot more tension on this pole. So I wouldn't suggest loosening the screw as we did on the flat bar and uh, securing the lug onto the stay there, I would rather suggest you need to drill a hole on the side and then use a bolt like I'm showing you here which will go stra straight through and on the other end you would go and put your lug and uh, obviously the stay then would be mounted like the others onto the wall. number of different tensioners that you can get um, to tension the wire. Uh, the old method is a stainless steel spring um, which you can still use. It is your cheaper alternative. Um, the next one is the later version of it which is um, also a tensioner but you can see it has plastic on it and I'll explain the differences why. The third one is a combination tensioner which we call a hybrid combo which has the spring and we have a ratchet system for tensioning the fence so you can tweak the fence if you need to tighten it a bit more um, and you'll still have the spring on the back end which will keep tension. The third one is just a tensioner on its own uh, without the spring so if you've got a slightly longer fence and you need to tension it a bit more obviously the, sometimes the spring won't be able to give you that that tensioning you require so the better method is to use just the tension on its own and if you're going with a bigger fence then obviously you're going to use this big boy um, for the bigger type fences 
in order to be able to secure these things onto a bobbin you need to use a hook so on the smaller fences which are a 30 meter uh, sort of fence you could get away with the thinner uh, hook and um, I wouldn't really suggest more than that because the, the hook it tends to bend and then it'll pull loose the uh, bigger better fences you're gonna use uh, the bigger hook which is a, a thicker hook uh, for this application okay so if you're going to now obviously tent, want to tension the fence you put a hook onto your spring and then you put it around onto the bobbin something like that and you would then feed the wire through here and then you'll be able to tension it that's the cheapest simple method um, the problem with this if you tension it too much you'll stretch the spring and damage the spring if you use any of the other ones that won't happen as you can see in a hybrid tensioner it has a limiter so you can't go further than a certain point and then you also can set the tensioning um, on the ratchet system so you would just slide that in same story again the wire would feed through and then you'll be able to do your tension and you're always going to have something uh, to keep the fence um, tight Right, when um, obviously doing the connections on the fence, you want to try and keep the wire continuous. <clears throat> don't want bad connections anywhere because that will cause the fence to have false alarms and obviously to lose power through the fence. So the two main um, uh, devices that are used would be a ferrule. And the ferrules will come in aluminium. Um, uh, tin plated copper, um, stainless steel and uh, they'll come in various sizes depending on how much wire you're going to be pushing through the ferrule. And the second one will be a line clamp which you can get as galvanized or you can get it in stainless steel. So here's a larger one and then obviously you get the smaller version of the clamp that you can use for joining the wires. Okay, the type of wire that you can use for your electric fencing, um, there are three main types. There's aluminium, there's stainless steel, um, and there's two types of stainless steel. There's a 304 stainless steel and there's a 316 stainless steel. Um, and then of course we have the last one which is your galvanized uh, wire um, that you can use as well. Um, these uh, wires are in a solid or a braided type form. Okay, stainless steel wire um, is pre preferably used uh, in areas down the coast where you have a lot of salt in the air or in industrial areas and factories or um, if, you're, if you stay close to areas where there's a lot of um, pollution or something like that or you have uh, gum trees that give off a lot of gum um, then the stainless steel wire will be able to um, outlast any of the other wires uh, 20 years plus is pretty much what you'll get out of them uh, that's on 316 on 304 stainless steel uh, it'll also be there but after about 12 14 years you'll actually see a fine brownish rust on the wire but it'll still uh, outlast um, any of the other wires that you'd have. The disadvantage of this wire is only one thing. The resistance of the wire is extremely high versus galvanized wire or aluminium wire. So uh, you need to take that into con consideration um, when you're running the distances of your fence which will be explained in a later episode. Um, so a big energizer would have to be used obviously to, to give you the same amount of shock from, from the fence. Okay, aluminium wire, you can get it in a, a solid and you can get it in a stranded. It is a softer wire than the stainless steel um, 
but it's going to work just as well and it's going to last just as long as your stainless steel wire. What happens is why you eventually get a bit of a corrosion on it, but it goes, you get an oxide, so you get a little bit of a greenish color will go to it, but the wire will still be more than adequate to do the job. The advantage of this is it has a very, very, very low resistance, so you can run this wire on a small energizer around an average property, and um, as I said, we'll explain later on the, the measurements um, of how much wire you can run. Um, it's quite soft, as you can see, it's quite easy to bend, um, but as I, as I say, it'll last the same amount of time and you don't need a big energizer like you would need with stainless steel. Okay, this is what we call HD cable, so the high tension cable, which is what you're going to use between your energizer to your electric fence, your lighting protection, um, obviously and your earthing, uh, this is the type of cable you use. There are different variations in this cable. Obviously you get a bigger gauge and um, you can get the center core to be a solid core. Like this one as you can see is a multi-strand um, and the, the solid core can be um, also an aluminium wire as well. Um, you can also get this in a cable form where you'll have three of these together um, which will, can make your installation a little easier when you are obviously wiring up your fence. Okay, what we do have is lighting protection to protect the energizer. Um, with the new regulations in South Africa, it's, it's, it's uh, obviously regulation to have this. Uh, and it's going to help with your fence. Um, as you can see, the first one on the left hand side we have here is a more uh, sophisticated type one which has um, uh, electronic components in it which allows it to be able to react um, to um, lighting much quicker than the other two units. Okay, with your electric fencing, you need to have earth spikes all around the, the property. Um, this is just a galvanized one with a, a double nut. Uh, on the end of it so you can obviously put the lug on and then tighten it up. Yeah, the earth spike is used um, obviously as we say for lighting protection so if your fence gets struck we need that energy to go somewhere so by having the earth sparks on your um, earth wires on your electric fence this will also help through the lighting protection so you need to insert these earth sparks all around on your property uh, it reduces the noise obviously on the fence and also by having decent proper grounding um, the electrical shock that the person will get will be a lot more intense. Okay, uh, this is what we call an inline gate contact. So if you have a sliding gate and you need to open or close the gate, well this is the type of contact you would use uh, on the gates and if you obviously doing a fence which is uh, a monitored alarm type fence, then um, this is the type of contact that you need to put on your fence instead of the old methods of using chains or just a, a spring um, method. As you can see it's got these uh, pieces that are, are um, they can push in and out and they'll make contact with this ring on the outside so in other words when the gate is opened the circuit will be closed because what's going to happen these brass pieces will touch against you and you'll have a closed circuit when the gate closes what will happen is on this side it will push in and the, the wiring circuit that you have on your gate will then obviously make contact pushing up against the contacts and now you still have a closed loop circuit but obviously with the gate connected. Alright, there's a lot of manufacturers uh, who make uh, different energizers. Um, energizers can be from uh, a 2 joule right up to 18 or 24 joule. 
um, but depending on the application um, you'd have different energizers with either single zone monitoring uh, double mo zone monitoring or multi zone monitoring um, that will all depend in on the installation so the device or the energizer that you're going to use will be determined by the type of fence that you're going to be installing.